Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Good to see you again, and welcome back to another episode of Cards in Hand. This is episode 16, and we are joined with an amazing guest, my man, Fee Win over here. We just experienced nationals together. We were at the Airbnb. We hit the Hurtado. I mean, we did everything, bro, yeah. besides win. You know what I mean? We did everything besides win the event. Uh, I'm just saying like, Hurtado was a win in my book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hurtado, <laughs> Hurtado was a win. That's a fact. What is that? Uh, fill me in on that. What is this? Hurtado? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude. All right. So <laughs> what are we talking about? So here? Texas barbecue Times. Okay, okay. I, I was assuming I was because I was gonna ask y'all had barbecue good barbecue while you were here, right? Bro, we had the best oh, yeah. barbecue. Like, okay, all right. Yeah, Fee did his research. He was like, Bro, I'm gonna find the greatest spot near Dallas and we're just gonna go there. And Love I was it. like, done, right? Right. What was it? It was the day before, right? It was Friday that we went. Uh yes, we went Friday. Yeah, dude. There was a line literally out oh, yeah. the door, yeah. and we we were like, Oh my god. What do we do? And like we had called ahead for food and everything, mm -hmm. so we were like, do yeah. we have to wait in this line? And you know, I'm like, no way, dude. There's no way. We called ahead. We're not waiting in this line. So you know, I walk up to the front and I chat with this guy, and the guy's like, oh, you got to go around to the side door. We go around to the side door. We get this massive amount of barbecue, and yeah, we just lived our best lives. I think we each ate like had to have been at least forty pounds of meat each. You know? Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. And and just so we're clear, so everyone that, that is hearing this, um, Texas is the best barbecue state. There is no if, ands, <laughs> or buts. There's no arguments. Kansas City, Carolina, all these other places, I'm sorry, you're just not doing it like Texas. We we are the kings of barbecue, always will be, always have been, period. Yeah, you right? got to represent, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not waiting several hours in line, like the, the tell off sign that you're in the right place is you're literally waiting several hours in line for, for barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just that's just how it goes around here, man. I mean, I would definitely go again, that's for sure. Um yeah, yeah. but that's my that's my go to for sure. Because yeah, like right. before we were going to Terry Black's and then like and then I did then did I then I did a little bit of research and found that place. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like uh, there was like a, a, a ranking or whatever of like the best barbecue spots in Texas or whatever that they do mm -hmm. every and her title is number two. Oh, it's number we would have went to number one. I think the drive was like an hour and a half out. So oh, okay, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, we did like a thirty-minute drive, right? Like it was, it wasn't far, but it was, you know, we had to do like a little thirty-minute drive mm -hmm. for it. But dude, it was so worth. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 But you know what's funny is that you know we're over here just chatting about barbecue, but ladies and gentlemen, we had an experience at nationals, um, and in good ways and bad ways. Uh, I would say. As far as, you know, just an event as a whole, this event was ran and, you know, just held so much better than the previous national event that we had this past January. We had unbelievable failures um, from the previous event, you know, with the, uh, the two game skip for the, the two round buy for, you know, the invitees and then, you know, the players having to play. Uh, it was a nightmare. So... Um, you know, this one felt really smooth. I think the rounds were, you know, relatively quick. There wasn't too many issues. Uh, personally, uh, I had a, I had a good time, you know, minus, uh, I would have pre preferred to do better, obviously. But, um, as far as like a, an event ran, you know, as a whole, I, I thought it was pretty well done. What were your thoughts, Fee? Yeah. I mean, in terms of the events, like that was honestly probably one of the smoother ran tournaments. I, I, I the layout, I think, kind of like bothered me. The especially. layout was weird, yeah, yeah, and especially because uh, the way they set it up was like there's a tournament area, but you were if you had a spectator pass, you weren't allowed to go into the tournament area. Yeah, so, like if you're if you were just there to hang out and like support your friends, it kind of feels really bad. They they either have to go out of the tournament area, yep, to come and like hit, meet up with you, or like get to sneak them in. Just like I guess another whole issue in itself. Oh, oh I didn't even really. think about that. You could just sneak someone in. Yeah, you you just you go in and then you take somebody else's uh, competitor pass and just walk out and then give it to the guy so you can walk in. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, realistically though, there wasn't anything to do in that area besides like compete. You know. Yeah. So I mean, I get the idea is that they wanted to keep it separate so that the people that were doing. Um, uh, what's the name of it? But like the people that were doing like the uh, 
uh, why am I forgetting that the scavenger hunt, um, as well as, you know, like maybe some of the other things like lining up for retail pro- um, product, trying some of the demo decks and everything. Like, I think it just gave them, you know, like their own space, which was cool. But uh, at the same time, um, yeah, the, the layout was a little weird, like seeing where they put things and like how it was. I was kind of walking around like, what, wait, what it, is this where I'm at? Like, where, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, but I mean, as a whole, I, it, it was just that the event ran smoothly, which was great. Um, I like that they actually were using, I mean, this is crazy to be saying this. Like, this is almost blasphemous to be saying this. Is that the Bandai TCG Plus, it works well. <laughs> it works well. Like, it, it actually is working for certain, great. For, certain, for, for running a tournament, it, it works oh, well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just phrase yeah. it like Yeah, yeah. for it's signing up for events. Just, sucks no. it's yeah, terrible. No, no, no. Like, like searching events and fu- like it basically anything outside of the realm of actually running a tournament on it it's yeah. pretty doo-doo yeah oh yeah for sure yeah that's fair I'm, you know what well, you take the good with the bad and it, if it no, functions yeah. really well if it functions really well as a tournament uh app <laughs> like that and there's no hiccups or no speed bumps you know what give me that I, like what if that's the price we have to pay so be it, you know, like, you know, I, I'm totally fine. It is nice. Every every tournament that I've ever used that is done through that app, it it just flows beautifully. There's no issues. There's no problems. It's yeah, super easy. So in that regard, you know, I got to tip my hat to them for that. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm happy with it. And I'm actually hoping that they use that for the rest of, you know, going forward and whatnot. Although I will say there is one hiccup that I heard about, um, which was the hiccup with... Um, uh, was it Chris Sock that got second place and then like he his placement got changed because of mm-hmm. it was like an yeah. Yeah. yeah it was an online tournament because I think that they hadn't dropped the player or excuse me like eliminated the players that had dropped yet from um, players match win ratios and so that was like a bit of an issue but I think that that was just a clerical error like they didn't realize that they hadn't done it yet at that point and it affected standings after the standings had more or less kind of been finalized if you want to say that um Mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's something but i think that since they have learned from that situation it changes the ongoing you know um uh, upcoming events and stuff like that for that not being an issue and yeah i mean i'm happy i'm like dude if they keep doing this and it's successful and it's smooth like i will be super happy you know less less problems for competitors and players we take those bro we take those yeah. yeah, just in regards to like the the thing with Chris, because like it affected a whole bunch of people in that tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> oh, it affected you. From it. Oh, really? Yeah, I from it. yeah. Oh, wow. But, um, like I, I think it's just like a bigger like a thing about like, how they do tiebreakers. Yeah, like that's that's what happens, right? When they when they drop them, I guess like it it ruined your tiebreakers essentially. So like, uh because like while they are in the event, I was top sixteen, but after they dropped them, I, I think it made my tiebreak. So yeah, probably the same thing with Chris, right? So it's like, yeah, I mean, kinda, it kind of sucks. It's, I agree, I agree, but at the same time, like, there's probably you, you could have been someone that could have potentially benefited from that, yeah. If, um, if it, if you, you know, happen to have different tiebreakers, so I think it's kind of like a, it's a double edged sword where you know you have these players that are, you know, they they get their third loss and then they drop. And you go, okay, well, is that good for me or is that bad for me? Like, if they got their third loss and they were like 0-3 or something like that and they dropped, that's great for me. If they were like 6-3 and or 6-2 and and then they got their third loss and they decided to drop in like a 10-round tournament, that sucks because they actually had a positive win ratio. You know what I mean? Not that, I I don't know, maybe somebody would drop at 6-3, but... uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It is one of those things that it, it, I feel like it, it has its positives, but it also obviously has its negatives because there can be some of those moments where like that player might have actually helped you bump up because they did have a positive win ratio or maybe they had a win over a player that you know had a really good win ratio and that would have bumped up your opponent ma- match percentage and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, not, it's an imperfect... Uh, you know yeah it, yeah it's, it's less like commentary about the app and more more commentary about the the tiebreaker system yeah yeah, and yeah t- it, it kind of sucks sometimes yeah because, like, especially when we get into those scenarios where like the guy you you get you go all the way to the last round right and the guy and at, in, the, in the last round the guy who loses doesn't get second because his tiebreakers just happen yeah like, bad. like he yeah. was undefeated to the last round like those those kinds of things like really like 
kind of rubbed you the wrong way. I agree. And I got super lucky in my second place because I got to the final round and lost. And I did get second place um, yeah. because of my, my match win rates uh, and my opponents and how they performed. Uh, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Like I could have definitely not gotten second for that. And that would have sucked. <laughs> I, would, I would have been soul crushed, but you know, we, we still got it. So we're, we're happy. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Tiebreakers are like a weird thing. I don't know how to solve it. I don't know what the solution is, but it's, yeah. it's, a it's something that they got going on. And honestly, I, I, I would imagine that eventually it gets to a point that, you know, Hey, we've got a great you know, a great system working or like everybody at least understands the system. And, yeah. you know, like you understand that you can have good moments from it and bad moments from it. But yeah, no, it, it, it honestly, the system is mostly fine. It's just, I wish they would fix those edge cases. Cause it comes mm. up more often than you mm. think. Like where yeah. the guy, where the guy who loses last round actually doesn't get second. Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember Kevin? Yeah. From the Airbnb? Yeah. It happened, it happened to Kevin on, on one of his eight one. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I would yes. be very upset, but I don't know. That's it's tough. Um, it's tough because like I think that y since they don't have like the 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 top cut, right? Um, there, I wonder if there's like any way they could just do like once you get to eight undefeated players or something like that. You like you guys are locked in. You are the top eight, right? Or something, or maybe four. Excuse me, four undefeated players because it would be. Like you guys are no, no, that doesn't work either. Cause yeah, it would be the top eight. No. Yeah. Like the, either you just like hard say, like if you make it to the last round, you're second or whatever for a second. Yeah. Or like you'd have to change the price structure, which is like a whole different contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could yeah. do something like yeah. if you, every X one gets this, every X two gets this, every X three gets this. But then that's like, yeah, people don't like that. Cause then you get weird numbers of price cards and then, and like, you have to make so many more price cards if you go all the way to X3. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, oh, yeah. 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 That's a good point. I didn't really think about that because there's yeah. X3 is like usually over 100 players. Or, yeah, pretty sure over 100. I do kind of yeah. like the idea of just saying if you make it in the final round, this is first. This is for first and second place. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I think that's yeah. just like a simple, clean way to say this is how it, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. Um, because you know, that, that hmm. situation sucks when you're in the finals and then you lose to literally the person that won the entire tournament and then you get bumped down. It's just like, <laughs> are you kidding me, dude? Yeah. Like, I literally just lost to the guy, the best player in this entire tournament. And I'm not the second best player. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what, what, like it just, the math doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I get the all the logic? numbers and the matchups, but there's something that just doesn't just doesn't let me digest that very well. I'm just like, that just, just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It, it, it's that situation where where, the, <laughs> um, where you don't get second. And the other situation that I think is especially heartbreaking is a lot of the tournaments, there's always one X1 that doesn't get top eight. Oh, I yeah. know. So they miss the serial. Yeah. So like, yeah. those two situations, I wish they would just fix that. It's just, it's so heartbreaking, honestly, because yeah. yeah. it's not in your control. Yeah. God, you're not wrong, dude. I've seen so many people that are like X1 in their ninth place, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like, like if, I, if it was up to me, I would just give you the cereal, like X1. Like it's so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's rough. Well, you know, sometimes there's there's just got to be winners and there's just got to be losers. And yeah, and speaking of winners, let's talk about the goat Jackson Huang real quick. Like, and also <laughs> I feel like I'm I I heard the announcer I. I need to ask him this personally. Am I mispronouncing his name? Is it Jackson Hong? Because the announcer actually said Hong. And I was like, oh, shoot. I thought it was Huang. Like, I might have mispronounced it. And I apologize, Jackson. I love you. I'm going to have to get back to you on that. But, um, yeah, this dude just crushed again. Back-to-back -back world appearance, uh, appearances. Back-to-back -back final tables for the Insane. national event. Um, obviously black, yellow, Luffy insane. We, we talked about this in the past, uh, you and I, Daniel, and, mm -hmm. um, we, you know, I will say like, what were your guys, what was, what was y'all's reaction to some of the top decks that we saw? Cause I mean this, I personally have a, you know, something that I'll bring up that it reminds me of, but, um, this is really interesting. Just seeing black, yellow, Luffy, Reiju, Bonnie, Nami, Luchi, all in the top eight. Uh, yeah, what's y'all's reaction? And like, did you did you see it coming? Did you, you do you think it's maybe a little like, wow, okay, I didn't expect that deck to be there, you know? Um, well, uh, you know, 
And then the podcast that doesn't exist that got erased from time uh, <laughs> yeah. last week. I kind of, you know, like I'm gonna. I, I want to say that <coughs> I made I made a very specific comic about Jackson and about him playing Black Yellow Luffy and how scary a, of a deck that is, especially in the hands of someone like Jackson. And lo and behold, so you know, like I'm gonna toot my own little horn a little bit with that one. But so for me to say like I'm surprised by it, I'm not because like this was. I mean, I I didn't. Was it like unanimously that I thought that Jackson was going to win the whole thing? No, not, I mean, but at the same time, when I saw the results and I saw him take the win, I was like, well, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's Jackson with an amazingly strong deck. Um, so I wasn't like, I'll be honest with you. There wasn't really too many things that really stood out to me. I think it was more or less as what I kind of thought I was going to see within the, the, you know, the top. Yeah. Um, but I will, I do want to say the one thing about Jackson's, deck list that i like i loved was like he's got like four or five like one ofs in that in the deck list yeah and so that was the one thing that really stood out to me that i was like damn because i'm someone that like i have a hard time with one ofs in my deck i'm just i don't know what it is like i try i try and stick with consistency and yeah i've played decks where it's like a one of or a two of two of is kind of like yeah whatever the two of is fine but i was like it was a little bit of a head scratcher for me i know they all yeah. have their situations where those, those cards are useful and they're for specific matchups and so on um but man i was like really taken back by the list that was that he was running and to have that level of success that he did with those little one ofs like sprinkled here and there um but and, and not only that but him to overcome the bonnie uh the bonnie matchup as well i was like yeah. damn okay that you know like it it tells you a lot about the player when when they can overcome you know those types of matchups that are just brutal for for black yellow luffy um but still found a way to make it happen so um i i love i'm like i was totally cool i thought it was a great nats in terms of representation uh from decks uh great nats in terms of representation from the players uh i think you know collectively it it pretty much was everything i think i could have asked for and uh yeah, I, I was. I mean, sadly, I didn't get to make it. There was a lot going on back here at home for me. Uh, but yeah. from a spectator standpoint, just watching it from the sidelines, like it was, I was perfectly content, and uh, I, it was just fun to watch. It was a cool event, and uh, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what happens in Orlando too. Heck yeah! Yeah, for me, uh, my bingo card did not have Raging making top eight. I'll be honest. I, <laughs> I had a Raging making top thirty-two. I could not agree more. Yep. It was like in so I think that one surprised me the most because especially in my testing like the deck did not feel particularly impressive into like most of the meta besides Nami more or less. So honestly, like who are, like the two people I think who played Raju up to top thirty two and top and second place. Yeah, like shout out to them like that and that's incredible with that because oh, I really did not three so, there was three speed, yeah three. Yeah, like honestly, to me, like that deck was not <laughs> was not it. I, so the yeah. fact that made it that far, I'm surprised. Those guys are players. Yeah, no, yeah. that that was crazy. Like the Raju in second place. Um, you know, there were. Yeah, I just think that the black yellow, yellow Luffy matchup is like just not great whatsoever. It's terrible for and, Raju. That's not a good matchup. Yeah, and you have to think about like he made it all the way to top thirty two, so had to have played some in first. You know, first day. And then from top 32, made it to second place. So 100% had to play more, you know, uh, into that. Like, it obviously, he had a very, very good understanding of that matchup and just, like, what he needed to be doing, what cards he needed to be looking for. But, yeah, that, that caught me off guard. And then Jewelry Bonnie making it to fourth place was pretty surprising to me. Um, I thought that Bonnie was not a bad deck by any means, but I just didn't think that it would really last that long because of, you know, the, I don't know, the the decks that it's not great into. And, uh, but yeah, Jewelry Bonnie making it to fourth place was pretty sweet. I did, I had definitely expected it to make top 32, maybe like one or two, but there was surprisingly four. Um, uh, that kind of caught me off guard a little bit. And uh, yeah, but Jewelry Bonnie, I don't know, just some of the matchups it had just didn't feel like, yeah, I mean, like you're lo you're hoping for By Luffy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, so for me, for me, like when I was testing it, because I, I did consider taking money. Like the deck is fine. It's mm -hmm. not for me. It's like not particularly impressive. It's just that you have a really good By matchup. Yeah, and like, 
Luchi can brick. <laughs> yeah. Which is like your only bad, like only really super, super bad matchup because like Nami is a bad matchup technically. But like because people are running more copies. Um, oh, I think your mic cut out a little copy. bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because yeah. people are running more copies on Nine Cost Zoro, like yeah, 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 the yeah. Nami matchup is very playable. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I expected Bonnie to t go far. I just wasn't expecting Bonnie to beat Luchi in top cut, to be honest. Yeah. I thought he would end up dodging it, but he ended up playing two in top cut. So mm. Yeah. I think I think Bonnie's uh one of these decks and one of these leaders that uh, it it you know, like in, in Nats, we're not talking like any kind of like when I when I use the term skill gap, it doesn't mean like it's some dude who's just like that much better than the next person because we're talking Nats here. But I do feel like Bonnie is definitely like <laughs> very pilot driven deck in the sense that the person that knows the matchups extremely well knows what cards they want to see and just overall is just that good of a player i think bonnie is is a very viable and still a very strong deck yeah luchi's a, a tough matchup but like v said how many i mean as someone who's played a lot of luchi i can't tell you how many times my hand is just trash and i can't correct my hand in, in enough time to to really get to where i want to be in the bonnie matchup so there's definitely that um, but you know, it's a five life green leader that has Hawkins and has Zoro. I mean, like it can't, it really can't be that bad of a deck to be honest with you. It's, it, but I think that is that deck and that leader kind of differentiates like a little bit of skill between some players, uh, more so than other, like it relies more on the skill of the player than it does the cards, I guess is more what I'm trying to allude to when it comes to Bonnie. So like when you see these top players that perform well for it it's not uh, for me it's not all that surprising even granted because like fee said like outside of the luchi matchup it's really not it's really not that bad um yeah. and then you know if you're going to make a meta call going into nats i think a meta call was was seeing that you're going to see a ton of black yellow luffy yeah so like you know for me it all it all kind of makes sense um do i think like it's an insanely strong deck i don't uh, but to to see it perform the way that it did um, wasn't too much of a surprise for me, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I can agree. I just think that uh, I feel like you got to dodge so much, you know, to to got to dodge. Mm -hmm. Like with how many, I feel like half the players had to have been on Lucci or something like that. Yeah. yeah very I, close. Yeah. yeah. And it's not to discredit a guy either. If you looked at his uh, matchup thread that he posted on Twitter, I think he only played, I don't think he played a Luchi in Swiss. I think he played oh, five dollars. Oh wow! That's oh, wow! I just dodged him. Yeah. Wow! And I mean, yeah, not yeah. not discrediting, not no, taking no, anything no, no. away from him at all, because like, dude, sometimes you just get a good Swiss, and then you go into top cut, and you can play against your bad uh, matchup or your worst matchup or something like that. And realistically, they could just brick, you know, in one yep, yep. one ex uh, uh, like important match, and then you're like, oh, I'm up. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not to discredit him, but also like, he definitely proved that he can win the matchup, right? Because he played two Luchis yes. and Topka and went and won two one both times. So that's like, it, crazy. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. that's crazy to me too. But I mean, it goes to show that it's not a fluke either. You know, like you don't you don't beat two of what we would consider two of the better Luchis probably in the nation in top cut with Bonnie and not say, oh well, he just got lucky. You know, that's 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 skill expression as well is what I'm more inclined to believe. To be honest with you. Yeah. yeah, I feel like sure. if I played against him, you know, I would have got clapped. So uh, <laughs> I, I personally know where I stand. Okay, I stand X three Hurtados. Okay, that's yeah. that's that's where I'm at. Uh, but uh, hey, no, me, I'm just I'm just a high roll hero, bro. When I when I see all the best cards and I win, when I don't, I don't. <laughs> it's just, it's just that easy, honestly. You draw, yeah. you just draw better. Just draw better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, GGs, man, easy. Just draw. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything you should take away from this podcast, it should be if you want to get better at the game, just draw better. Like that's that's all, all it is. All you gotta do. You don't need Literally. to play a bunch of games, get coaching. Just draw better, like you know. Just draw better. Just, yeah, easy. Just easy. Out, out draw your opponent. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all it is. One piece in a nutshell. Yeah. No, I will say, but to comment on y'all's rage you thing, I think that's actually a very valid point by feed too about seeing the rage you like that. Rage you was one of those decks that I feel like when Law wasn't in the picture, like it got overhyped. Like, yeah, rage you's very meta and it can win games. But the way that I saw a lot of people talking about rage you, I was like, oh, hold on now, hold on now, yeah. like. Let's let's dial it back a little bit. Um, so I was a little bit surprised with that. Again, I don't like I didn't see what the matchups were going into it, but um, the black yellow Luffy matchup is tough for Rage. You you know if you're getting wins over that, then you know like you you're gonna do all right. The Luchi, as someone who plays Luchi, I don't really 
I'm not concerned with Raju all that much. Uh, like it's it's very winnable. Um, but I was that that's a, that's a fair point by fees is seeing the the amount of Raju that we saw. But you know, like like so many decks that are in the meta right now, if Raju just sees all the cards at at the right times. Like it can be a, a huge pain in the ass, you know. Like, it's it can be a really really good deck that just when it when it comes out the gate and it just has that momentum and it keeps the momentum like all the way into a big judge play, mm. it, like you know, like it it can it can really cook. And so it, it the, the player that the players that were successful with Raging might have just had had just saw the right cards at the right times because I I agree that that was a little surprising to see as well. Yeah. But I mean, all in all, I think uh, looking at the you know the top thirty-two uh, breakdown of you know what we saw for leaders and you know players as a whole, it makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that you know seeing the numbers, uh, you, sure, maybe there's a few that you're like, oh wow, really? Like I didn't I didn't expect that much of that, or I didn't expect that deck at all. Like there was a Katakuri that made it. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> there's there's always got to be one. Yeah, there's there's always one. one and L, one there's category. Always one. It's always there's a random. Always yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it's interesting that, you know, now going into OP08, right? Um, we do see that uh, some of these decks, I'm not saying they're like fading out per se, but they're just not really going to be, I would say, maybe super useful towards the beginning of OP08. Yeah. Um, and then when 8.5 hits with the starter decks, it kind of changes, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I, I think this is really interesting because, like, starter deck 14 made a big splash in the European um, mm -hmm. finals. And now starter deck 14 Luffy is being looked at very seriously as a contender for being viable in the OP08 meta. Um, I believe that... Uh, um, oh, my gosh. Why am I forgetting the name of the deck? Oh, no. I'm forgetting the name of the deck. What, what color is it? Um, you know what? I, I, it'll come to me. But you know, obviously, Lucci and and Luffy, the uh, Sardec thirteen, as well as uh, uh, Mono Black Lucci, still going to be very, very heavily played. But we've had. Um, I feel like I've seen a bunch of players on, uh, not like super seriously, but I think like really just kind of seeing where it's going with the Zoo Zoro, like the Animal Zoro build. And that just being kind of like the new aggro deck for the OPO8 meta. And it's, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of good, but it's also kind of, I don't know. It feels like you're rolling the dice, you know? It's like, yeah. hope to God my my chopper hits all of the things that I want it to hit. Yeah. It, it has that glass cannon kind of feel to it, right? Like, yeah. uh, like in some ways, kind of like a red-green law. Maybe not. That's not a good, like, one-for-one -one comparison. But that same type of, like, it can bring the heat and it can, like, just feels like it just rolls you over. Yeah. And then sometimes you're just like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Like, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, easy, you know that, was, that wasn't, you're not so tough. It, it definitely has that, like, that glass cannon kind of feel to it for sure. So I think what is one of its big suppressors, obviously, is just the four, the 4C... Four <laughs> Lucci that that every you know the four of and, and the Lucci deck that just like just destroys that that the, that that style of play with all the little weenies in there like it's just right it's tough it's tough man like it so I think that that's kind of its natural predator right now but overall like it seems I haven't played it myself because it's just not my style of play but it looks super fun I'm not gonna lie like I can't tell you how many times they swing with that little chopper and just spam stuff out I'm like could you stop <laughs> Could you stop doing that, please? Yeah, like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, geez. like, I forgot. I forgot what it felt like. To, well, I guess I we haven't, I haven't played against a, a red purple lawn forever because it doesn't exist. But just getting those pings of five k over and over and over, like, yeah. I forgot how super annoying that is, man. It's just like, man, could you just stop, man? Oh yeah. But um, I I like I like the whole I like the concept of the deck, the Zuro like. With Zoro and Chopper, like it's just like it just makes there's a lot of like I don't know, like I love seeing those two have synergy together. I don't know why, but yeah. like it's just it, from I guess it's from the show. Up, I guess is what it is. But <laughs> like I, I I like it's just it's it's a cool deck and I, I got love for it. But uh, I don't I don't find it to be particularly strong. It's it's good, but I don't think it's I don't think it's like a contender meta deck is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think your your point about like it feels like very fragile and like the same way that Regging Law feels fragile. Like it's it is kind of the same. Like if you have if you're playing a deck that can interact with Chopper before a swing, like Zoro feels significantly less strong. Yeah. But 
if you're just playing like I don't know like Bonnie or something and they swing with the chopper, I can see it being like very annoying, mm-hmm. very, sc- very scary. But honestly, like depending on how what deck you're playing, it's pro- it probably ranges from this deck is no issue to this deck is the scariest thing I've played in a long time. Yeah. That's fair. That is fair because I I had a friend of mine that plays um the zoo zoo Zoro and or animal Zoro. I'm not sure what the Zuro, I, it's I, Zuro. I liked what Zuro, you said the Zuro Zuro yeah Zuro. So yeah. um that's good that's good I like that my uh, my buddy told me he was like yeah basically if I play against Luchi and they see more than one four cost Luchi uh it's, the, it's pretty much cooked like the Damn. game's yeah. over and I was like yeah. okay that makes sense um. But they said if, you know, they're up against other matchups, like the vast majority of them don't feel awful. They said they don't, they also don't feel like it's the greatest thing in the world. But yeah, they said uh, that most matchups actually feel like fairly decent. Um, I, I don't think that he's, he told me that he hasn't really played against a fan, you know, too many fantastic uh, Black Yellow Luffy players to have like a full opinion on that matchup. But. I'd be interested to see like, are you going aggro in that matchup and like yeah, like just are. swinging like you're, as early as just, possible? Yes, yeah, that, that would be my guess. You're just trying to you're just trying to kill them as fast as possible. Yeah, that's I it's think like, that's all. It's like sure you can self awaken. I don't care. You know, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep swinging. You know, really easy numbers at you every single time, and you're gonna have to give me a ton of cards. So, I don't think you know Luffy will have more than probably like five cards, you know, towards the end game, uh, very much in that matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I, what's the top end? Say, they run dragon. Yeah. Right. Dragon, yeah. yeah. Dragon yeah. dragons are top in. Yeah. yeah. I will say if I'm King and I sit across and someone puts down that zero in front of me, I'm, I'm Scoot. not, I'm not happy. Scoot. And if I don't see, and if I don't see Island in my starting hand, I might just say, you know what? GG's bro. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> because I'm just, I'm not getting there. I'm not getting <laughs> there in time. There's literally nothing. There's nothing for me to do. Like it, so like it it does have you know I, there's been a good amount of king here locally surprising so like you know there's been some zoros running around locally that just absolutely slaughter the king <laughs> you know it's uh, that's that's an ugly matchup and that's one that's uh from everything that i can tell is heavily favored for zoro but you know again it's like it's kind of back to the old days like we were saying with the original zoro and uh red green law like they're just going to ping you four or five times uh with five k's and just it's it's death by a thousand cuts you know just it's it's tough the worst is six k's that's yeah that's when i'm really yeah, sitting there like no those nice little 2k checks and then the moment you give them two 1k's they're like oh, oh. okay <laughs> it's yeah, over yeah yeah no you're you're yeah you're dead in the water the moment you have to give up those two 1k's you're just like i don't want to do this i don't want to do this <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. For the for the Zoro BY matchup, I don't know if you've ever played uh, BY into Dofi, but I think if it's it's a very similar feeling where they're just trying to go super wide and then mm-hmm. swing at your life and then threaten you with uh, Gable. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's probably like very similar. Oh yeah, yeah that's I, a good I, point. So you have to you have to stay at like one life pretty much the entire yeah. time or else you have to yeah, yeah it's you... almost it's become like red at the point where you just you don't <laughs> take your last life anymore you can't take your last life anymore yeah but it, yeah. it kind of makes me think like i don't know i'm just thinking i mean what you you attack like what for 14 i mean that's obviously really good um but it's only like 5k over if you just miss yeah. the diablo john bay do you just lose on the crackback more than likely uh, a lot of, it's a lot of times it kind of depends on like how fast the game went yeah like, if my player had like ended up playing like, the starter luffy like swinging ak at you over. right but yeah it, it, it's it's very similar but like it's not it's definitely not good for zoro in that sense because like you don't have access to pudding the way dofi does right so like you're you're just as the by player you just sit there and like okay will i live <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i can calc how much i can calc that i can live right yeah right Versus Dofi, like, like, yeah well will, will i survive the storm and like stabilize you know like that i think that's you know am i going to survive the storm and stabilize and then be able to to kind of take the go the game over from there so yeah it just but it, you know it, as far weird. as they don't run radical beam anymore though so it's like you're you're basically all in you know it's all gas yeah. all gas no, no breaks. breaks yep yeah that's yep. all it is so but hmm. so as far as the 08 leaders, I want to like, you know, Zoro is obviously a, an older leader that we're seeing brought back to new life. I want to like touch a little bit more specifically on the 08 leaders and what y'all's thoughts are in terms of 
the strongest 08 leader out the gate before the structure decks come. Um, because I, th from what I'm seeing on my end, and I'll let y'all go first, it, it, it's kind of what I saw in the East uh, in terms of like Calgary uh, being like a real good, just like out the box 08 leader. Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on, the, on specifically the 08 leaders and how strong they are or maybe are not? I'll let, I'll let you tackle that one, Fee. So what do we have for 08 leaders? We have Marco, Calgara, yep. King, yep. Garrett, yep. Chopper? And Pudding. Pudding. And Pudding. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so start with Pudding. Yep. I think the Pudding deck, easy to get into, very bad right now. Because because especially if you're expecting Lucci to be a high percentage of the metagame and potentially blue, it's hard to stick ten costs because people are playing like four copies of Ice Age. Yeah, you have Jack. You don't, and you don't, and the pudding deck generally doesn't play any removal for for that kind of stuff. So it's like they just get to set up on you, and like if they're playing Kuzan as well, it makes it really easy to cost. So I think just pudding is good, but the metagame is wrong for her right now, especially if people want to play Zoro. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. You, you just straight up lose to aggro, and like yeah. right now the slow decks all can interact with really big. Metagame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Chopper, as far as I'm aware from what I've seen, it, it looks like Zoro, but you don't get plus one to everything. Yeah. You only get plus one to three things, which I think is probably just worse. makes it worse Zoro. Yep. Yeah. I, the one benefit five, I did... Don't yeah, have five the, life either. <laughs> yeah, five life, yeah. yeah. The one benefit I did see to Chopper is that you can play the Nami to search nine cost Zoro, which you could argue is a benefit. Oh, yeah. Mm. I don't really think that matters. Okay. Yeah, that's like um, a... You know, yeah, but you're not really going for that, right? Like that's not really yeah. that's not really the play, right? Yeah, I, I don't think it's supposed to be the play, but it is one thing that you could do. Like you could search search Zoro, and then like I guess if you really wanted to kill Vy, you can Diablo Jamba your Zoro. GG. Kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just pray you're in a healthy enough spot to be able to do that. I guess when it comes to your your nine drops. So yeah, yeah. I feel like Kelgara is just more or less like. If you, in, in my opinion, it's like when Anel first came out, people had to learn how to play against it. And once you learn how to play against it, I'm sorry, but like the deck is okay at best. But it, it, I also think that the deck really thrives against, you know, non-black decks or non-like removal-based interactable, you know, decks. So yeah. it'll succeed into, you know... I would say maybe a third or like half of the meta, but it, you're you're looking at like playing against starter deck Luffy, Luchi, you know, um, By Luffy. That By Luffy's even running like a bunch of removal and reduction and stuff now. Like, I don't know. I think that you just lose all of your stuff super easily, and then you're realizing like, oh, I'm at one life and I have nothing to show for it. This kind of sucks. So, and it's super reliant on seeing the heal, like the Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. the if, five drop. if you don't, and it's, it's non-searchable. Yeah. Non-searchable. It is brutal, bro, if you do not see that card. I think I played Wait, What is? What type is Nolan? What type is it? I, uh, I don't remember. It's like Botanist. Yeah. Uh, something. Like, uh, it's yeah. not Sky Island. <laughs> yeah, it's like something what? super random. I don't remember off okay. the top of my head, but it's like, okay. yeah, it's really weird. Um. And since the card isn't searchable, it basically makes that deck like really rough when you're running like what, what, like three or four cards that look through the top five of your deck. You have Upper Yard, uh, Wiper, oh, uh, yeah, Ohm, Holly, Holly, Ohm, yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's it. Maybe there's another one, but I think that's it. Sure, do you say oh, sure? Oh, yeah, and Shura, yeah, so yeah. four, like, dude, <laughs> like. You're trying to dig, bro, and you're just basically like, oh, there goes another one to the bottom of the deck. Oh, there's another yeah. one to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it completely dictates how you play the the matchup if you have that card or, or if you don't. Like it's yeah, you have to take a completely different route if you don't have that card. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that was interesting. Um, and then uh, as far as Marco and King, yep. Like I don't know. Mark. Hey, let me let me let me let me tell you a little something about Marco real quick, okay? Mm. It's not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds about I've right. Been, yeah. Dude, I've been waiting for Marco for a while because like I love the white beard uh, package. I, like I love all the cards in the white beard package, the red white beard package. It's a super fun package to play with. Like it's just pause. Uh, it's just like it's just a ton of fun. And um, 
I, I really wanted to make that a thing. And I I think it's I don't want to say it's not it's not good, but it's not it's just okay. It's just solid. Um and I I think it's mostly comes down to skill gapping your opponent. Like I just I, I hate to put it that way, but like you're really just trying to like just make just make <laughs> make the for you're like forcing the situation on your opponent to to not play correctly and then just dropping two nine drops and then just and then just going from there like I, it's just such a it's a weird way to play the game that in my feels opinion. like um, a really bad it's reliant it's not, it's not the greatest it's not the greatest i mean it's 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 interesting but like i i will say it's <laughs> it can have its moments where it feels really good like it like there's times yeah, yeah, where i've yeah. played the deck and i'm like damn okay this is what i'm talking about you know this feels great you know this is this is what i want to see and then there's just been times where i'm just like why am i why am i investing any time into this like this is just <laughs> it is absolutely brutal the leader ability is like super fun. I love the I love the idea of you know placing a card top or bottom deck. Yeah, that's like, cool. And, and like filtering like that that leader ability in itself makes the deck fun to play in my opinion. Um, but you're just like you have to you have to set up your plays really really well. And if you don't have the cards to set up the plays, you kind of just flounder uh, and and die. So it's it's super fun. Um, but I don't think it quite has the juice to be like a con meta contender deck or leader yeah. as of now. Yeah, I think my thing with Marco is that like when you play it, the most impressive thing you do is win boards again. But that's that doesn't really mean you're winning. It means you're you're coming back from losing because just because like the minus two k <laughs> yeah. on bodies comes up a lot and like boards very easily. Or not, not even win boards, right? You come back from really weird board states, right? Yeah. Like you'll go, you'll go like leader effect Rayleigh, beat over something, beat over something, and it's like okay, well you have Rayleigh on board and like a like an Ezo that st stuck around, and it's yeah. not very impressive. Mm -mm. So like yeah, it it doesn't it just doesn't feel like you're ever doing plays that win you the game. You're just doing plays that like so, keep you, you in the game. Yeah, survive. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that's, that's 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 a great way to put it because it it genuinely feels like that. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's yeah. also very similar with how King kind of feels. Is mm -hmm. King, I'm just losing life as a four life leader without having like the most optimal removal or, you know, ways to develop my board. Um, you would think like, oh, dude, purple, black, and you could play uh, Moria. Like, dude, we're cooking, right? Mm. It, it just, it doesn't feel that way. You know, it feels like the deck is super reliant, one on seeing stage. If you don't see stage, then you're just kind of playing from behind because you're a four life leader and a lot of your cards are like really um, like important top end cards that you kind of need to get out early uh, in order to have like some sort of presence. But I don't know, maybe there's like, I feel like King could be figured out, but it just, I'm in the, I'm in the purple black Luffy waiting room for OPO nine. Like, yeah, King, King seems kind of meh to me unfortunately as much as i want i like i was so excited for that leader bro i was so <laughs> excited i was like yeah. yes purple black let's go and then uh i played it a little bit and i was like eh, it's okay it's not great but yeah it's fun it it is funny that it has almost the exact same vibe as our boy z uh the la you know the black purple yeah, leader yeah, yeah. z where you're just like you're just trying to hang on until you can get to the big boys yeah and then you know once you get there i will say though the 9c lin lin like if it wasn't for that card i don't think king could even like be even remotely competitive because every king game that i've ever played and had success with has come up to ramping to 9c lin lin and be able to heal all the damn life i took yeah, trying to yeah. get there yeah. And then just like chaining multiple nine C Lin Lins to where it's like, all right, now I control the board. I'm at two or three life, so I'm not gonna die right away. Um, and that card is literally, I in a lot of ways, I feel like is what allows that leader to have moderate success. But King is one of those things, man, where oh. you're just like, oh, that Lin Lin, oh, right. yep, yeah, yep. That's yeah, a good card, yeah, that Lin Lin right there. Yeah, that's a good card. But <laughs> King is definitely one of those things where you're just like, you want to talk about like stabilization like king is the epitome of like once i get to a certain point within like controlling the board and having <laughs> either a 10c kuzan or whatever the case you know and playing another 9c lin lin to you know control the board a little bit better 
if you can stabilize and just find that spot and like either continue to heal or just cl keep the board clear it feels really good but like it's kind of a big if you know like if you see the right cards if you see the island if you don't just get you know cut a thousand times by Zor like by <laughs> dofi or zoro like there's a lot of ifs there's way yeah. too many ifs for king to be like you know i think a top top deck yeah yeah i think uh, the thing for about king for me is not that it can't ever be like a top top deck yeah is that I, king is in like that category for me where the leader effect is too restrictive and costs too much so you're just playing a vanilla leader for way too so like in the same way that like z like you pretty much never want to use your leader effect as z until after you've set up basically right. if you can help it like mm -hmm. king kind of feels like that to me where it's like because what it's dawn minus two yep and then if you want to draw cards you have to be five or less right it's like yeah. there's, there's too many restrictions there that makes it feel really bad right well you're not i, I really don't want to even want to play it <laughs> yeah yeah you're not utilizing your leader ability until like turn four right so it's just like yeah. i yeah to your point it's just like a vanilla leader until you actually have cards that synergize with the leader ability and those are all they're all big drops so it you know again it's just one of those things where probably even later i would say probably like turn five you know well i mean yeah. you can get you can get to uh nine dawn on turn four four which you could play the kaido and then play kaido leader ability minus two and then ko you know whatever but it but then if yeah i mean it doesn't feel good no <laughs> put it that way no, yeah. it doesn't feel good especially if you don't have island and you're using leader ability that you know on those turns and you can't get to another big card the turn after yeah it's, you're, it's, it's just you're just you're you, you feel bad man i feel like getting the yeah. the 10 dawn and then being able to use the the draw two every turn is really nice um that, that does feel which goes which gives like in my opinion like the leader some sort of play in eventually in this game maybe but it's it's tough because, like you said, Fee, you know, you're basically playing a vanilla leader until turn five, turn while your opponent's like either developing stuff or you know doing stuff with their, you know, you're basically playing a card down. Um, but I mean, with black and purple being some of like the best colors uh, coming, you know, I mean, black's been the best color for quite some time. And purple just getting all of these insane additions, either through the upcoming starter decks or OPO9. Um, I mean, like, th th that deck uh, has possibility, but another deck that has huge potential in OPO8 right now is, uh, uh, or not OPO8, but 8.5 more than OPO8, it's still going to be a solid deck, is Purple Luffy, actually. Mm. Purple Luffy is, like, I, I think the deck's just never going to be bad, right? Like, it's just a good deck um the good leader effect um good build that you could put to it you know that is well-rounded and everything but you start to like tack in some of these new additions that are coming out and you know with the starter deck and with opio 9 holy smokes that deck becomes crazy man like mm -hmm. the uh, what, what is it the uh the luffy that plays a five cost straw hat character that's going to be massive for developing board and just having a big body on board the Sangaro that allows you to draw a card if you have eight or more Dawn when attacking yeah. is absurd. Like, if you mm -hmm. don't remove that card, you just, like, kind of lose, you know, because Purple Luffy is just going to run away with the game at that point. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, the uh, the Zoro search is nice, That the 4-6 yeah, uh, no. that searches a straw. I mean, that seems like... Yeah, that, that's just, like, their bread-and-butter opener. You yeah. know, if they're, going, if they're going first, which they tend to like to do, and they lead her ability turn two, and then... <laughs> play the four six into a search like that's just that just it it it's the deck starts off with just like a lot of momentum and yeah. you know like if it continues to run and you can't catch up you just get smoked man yeah uh, i don't know i'm just excited for for that but i think the last opo8 leader we were going to mention was carrot right um i can't really speak too much about it so i don't know if either of you have played carrot because i i just haven't played enough of it to really give you a, like a full opinion on it all right, so me, green guy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I that, that deck sucks. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say. Okay, so like my my thing about it is like, green does like really cool things like tap like having like the ability to tap a five cost on your leader is really cool, but forcing it on the forcing you to run the like the entire like minx package when none of the minx cards are bigger than five k or something. Yeah, like that yeah. Feels absolutely horrendous. So, 
at that point you might as well just play Bonnie because yeah. the mix package is not very good as far as I understand. But I think that if 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 the mix package had like a boss monster or something or like a bigger searchable body than 6k, I think it could be very good. The only, like, the only, like, caveat is that if we went back to, like, an aggro meta, like, if RP Law was a thing again, right? Right. I think, or Carrot would probably be better than Bonnie, only because you get to proactively tap characters down. So, like, in an aggro yeah. meta, Carrot is probably better. Okay. But I don't think we're going back to an aggro meta anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I don't think Carrot needs that much to actually be really strong, though. I think um, it, it, like, it has components to it that are, like pretty strong but there's just that you know we've said this a lot about other but it just needs that one little thing to kind of like push it over the edge and and give it that extra little bit of juice because i mean i hate playing against it like i don't think it's particularly strong but damn is it annoying to play against man like that yeah playing it you know against care the character that i don't know i don't that card when it when it says when attacking I'm like why is this a win attacking also yeah. like could you not could yeah. you not include that in this card please because i hate this card um, so when they do like carrot into Inarashi, you know, and you know they find their way to ten drop Dofies, and literally your whole board is just stuck, like it that that is super <laughs> annoying. But I, I will say like again, it's a five life leader, and there's one thing that I've noticed like five life leaders are the they're they're the meta right now for the most part. Like you know you got black yellow Luffy, I get it, but like five five life leaders are just so incredibly strong right now. Um, and I agree with Fee's point. Like, if, if if the Minx package just had that one extra card just to juice it a little bit more, a bigger card, uh, then I, yeah. I think that deck would... It, it could pretty easily find its way into the meta if it gets that just little bit more support that it needs. I I, I think it could be up there with a, with a pretty decent deck, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Vive Life leaders are just so uh, important at the moment because mm -hmm. without having, like blocker recursion kind of like sakazuki had with moria and um just being able to bring back more blockers with rebecca into like sabo or borsalino or stuff like that it's like once you get down to two life uh or heck even one life which isn't really that hard for your opponent to do you're like oh this is not good you know oh we're, we're in a we're in a spot so i feel like one thing oh yeah no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I just feel like uh, being the five life leader, it kind of buys you, like, depending on what deck you're playing, um, it usually buys you, like, an extra turn or two before you're put into, like, that potential lethal position where you actually have to start countering pretty aggressively. And that saves you cards in hand. You know, it's if you don't have a lot of good draw power, too, in a four life leader, you're just, you're like, yeesh, dude, I'm yeah. down bad. You know, this is rough, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh one thing we didn't mention about carrot too is when they open with the stage and the, like all the carrot people that i've known they like stage is just it's like a double-edged sword because uh, well like a lot of stages some stages have a little bit more application as you get later in the game you can kind of like sneak it out and be like all right well it still has you to in his lobby like it wasn't optimal to play it later in your turns but like if you didn't have a better play like it was fine you know no big deal yeah but that stage is just not a stage that you play beyond your your you know the curve that in which you can play it however when you do when they do play that stage and they can restand the carrot and you don't have an answer for it and it just keeps coming back at you like there like there's there's and i think you get one extra you get arrested dawn per turn as well like oh like, yeah i don't know there's enough there there's enough like basic there's there's a foundation there that i feel like is like okay this there is potential for this to turn into something um because that stage man that thing is super annoying i mean just insanely annoying so i just wanted to make that because i do feel like carrot plays differently with and without stage and it's yeah. it's it's a big part of what they want to do if they get it going dude it's just like man this is super annoying if they don't no big deal but damn dude that stage is that's a good ass that's a really good stage <laughs> man that's a really really strong stage which was Pretty cool to see them get that. Bro, when are we yeah. ever going to have interactable stage removal? Oh, hey, my God. This is why Calgara beats uh, Reiju because of uh, yeah, was yeah, it the yeah. five. Yeah, the, the, oh, you know, yeah, so the like, wiper. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, slow, too slowly, man. We need like a zero cost. Well, it doesn't have to be zero, but I'm saying like just like the zero cost events where you can just trash a card, 
and gain plus 3k we need that but for stage removal for every color like all right, all right. <laughs> yeah I, yeah i guess it makes sense like it, it would be nice to interact with stages but i think it's the also like the one sad thing is like if your leader relies on stage then every color gets a stage room that's like easy to play it was really bad <laughs> like it kind of just like it validates your leader yeah but you gotta think uh, <laughs> if i played onigashima on the next turn my opponent just ko'd it i'd be like i'm i'm, I'm, you're, I'm good like geez i'm, I'm yeah, out dude. Like, I, I, I would never play a leader that relies on the stage if if every color had like easy stage room yeah, but you got to think about it this way. I mean, I agree with you, but, um, you know, then decks start, ha they have to start teching that card into their deck. You know what I mean? Like, so you have to include like two stage removal cards or like four shit, even like three or four, who knows, right? Um, and that just seems like, uh, I don't know. I personally would would like to have at least something so that these these colors are these decks that can just run like I hate that Reiju is able to you know search through three of, the, of their cards every single turn. It feels like I'm playing against uh, like a better Sakazugi um, leader effect sometimes, and I'm like, dang, that's so crazy. Like I wish, I wish I could do that, you know. But um, but at the same time, like I'm not I'm not complaining about it. I uh, in in Reiju in particular, I'm just using it as an example. I just think that. If you are going to have, you know, this game that has a board that has, you know, a trash, a leader, a stage, you know, characters and everything, we can interact with every single thing on the board minus the stage realistically. Like, yes, there is some removal. I am I am aware. There's like a couple of cards in yellow and then there's like one in black, one in red, something like that. Um, but it just feels like... If the if stages are something you want to put in for the rest of the game, I you should have like a reliable source to counter it in every single color. Like I, I get what you mean that you know if there is a ton of stage removal, then why play a, a deck that relies on a stage? Well, you can build Reiju in multiple different ways. You know, it's a very generic leader effect. It's actually a really good leader effect too. <coughs> excuse me yeah yeah these congestions I, I, me. I mean i think the game will i think the game will eventually move in that direction uh in terms of slowly putting together you know a little little like, kind of like what we, well to the example you brought up the zero cost like we saw slowly every color like well they'd release a zero cost for a specific color yeah like with every set right and, and it kind of built up to where now every color has a zero cost event and i think i wouldn't be surprised if you know like they go in the direction of like all right well we'll give this color kind of like you know the tech that you're specifying in terms of like all right well this color can handle stage right now and then you know they'll slowly kind of trickle it out because i you know again like if it, if it is a meta where or if, it, if there is a situation where there's a lot of stage removal then it just nullifies a lot of cards and a, and a decent amount of leaders too which i don't think they're gonna want to they don't necessarily want to develop a meta where it's just like it makes leaders and, and cards irrelevant because of stage removal i don't know it could yeah. i don't know i think the other thing is like stages right now like every stage is a little too different a little too weird in terms of like actual impact I don't know if you guys have looked at all the stages very closely, but some of them are like, wow, this is like really good. And others are like, uh, why does this exist? Oh, there, yeah, there are some <laughs> uh, yeah. god awful stages. There's yeah. some bizarre, bizarre stages. And I'm like, what in the heck is this, dude? Yeah. yeah. And it feels like right now, like every time we see a new stage, it kind of feels like they're just like throwing things, like saying, like, how powerful can you make a stage before like we really do need to have for it, right? Because like any's lobby, I think it was like, not that. It didn't deserve to be banned, but like I feel like it's very borderline. Like minus two every turn is like very strong for sure. Yeah. But it's also like it doesn't do anything on its own. And like if you compare it to like Marine Ford, it's like it's very close, right? Where like you get the on play and the tap if you're a Navy leader. Like mm -hmm. so I feel like but then we we have stages like from like the yellow starter deck, like the big mom stage, where like you have to like remove something off your board to put something in life or something like that. Like it feels like they're still trying to figure out how strong they want to make stages. Yeah, there was there was the uh, that yellow mod. It's funny <laughs> you mentioned that one. I think there was a stage that I was testing in black. Uh, excuse me, blue yellow ace. I love I like blue yellow ace has been my pet deck for a good while, and I, I love playing it. But I was playing the stage, and I think it might be the one you're referring to, where it's a two cost that you take the top of your life, and then you can play out a three cost or less 
onto the board from your hand. And like, it was, it was good when I whiffed on the, the leader ability from Lace because I was just taking the card, you know, like Shira Hoshi that I couldn't call out with like a, a Luffy and I would just take it to hand. Yeah. But the second part, I, I wasn't running like, I think Brulee and like Peril Sparrow, the two three costs yellows that are coming to mind that have any type of meta relevancy. Um, but just really like it, so specific that it's just like, what, when am I ever really gonna, when is this ever gonna really have its have its place? There's a lot of really weird stages like that. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of weird stages. And I think like maybe the, the most disappointing thing to me is like they, they're kind of, or like the default stage right now is like, just like a searching stage. Like we have like the rev army impel down uh, and then the Raju stage, like Raju, yeah. you discard something, search top three. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's kind of disappointing, like in terms of like design space. They could do more. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. I think that's a fair critique for sure. And I mean, there's is you know, as far as the stage removal design, I mean, there's multiple ways that they can make it so that it it is relatively balanced to how you know decks would play with or without their stage, right? So for example. Um, this is just off the top of my head, but you know, this is just purely conjecture, not like it has to be this, but say you wanted to remove a stage of a cost of one or two, you have to trash one from hand and the zero cost event or whatever that you used, right? If it's a stage of three to five or something like that, you have to trash two cards from hand, blah, blah, blah. So it makes it so that sure, you know, you're losing your stage, but at the same time, like you're also you know, your opponent had to really like drop some cards or had to do, you know, some form of interaction that is like, you know, very negative to them as a whole. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just a, I'm just personally a guy that likes to be able to deal with everything that my opponent can potentially play onto their board and, and use. And just not having anything makes me go like, oh, bro, like, you know, I, I, there is that one black event card. I could run that, but it's like the card's kind of dookie. Isn't it a three cost or something like that? Like, isn't it? Isn't it kind of a, expensive? I think it's a two. Okay. I think it's a two. Um, it's like yeah. it's, it's like a tempest kick or whatever. Yeah, or it's like it, an eight yeah. tempest kick. Yeah. It's like two, um, two cost ko. Yeah, tempest kick slicer is the name. I just don't remember exactly what mm -hmm. it does. It's something like two cost. Uh, KO of stage um, and of like two or less or something like that. I, I yeah. can't remember exactly what it is. But yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah. You're just sick of seeing Raju get free searches, bro. That's Dude, I is. am. I'm a hater. <laughs> no, I love Raju. I think Raju is a super fun deck. But, it is um, fun. You know, it is one of those things that like there should be some form of cost to that, in my opinion. Like it should, you sure, you just play a, one, uh, you know, stage down for one dawn. That seems like you just got free value for the rest of the game for one dawn on one turn that you're going to get back every single, you know, rest of every other turn. Like mm -hmm. it should be one dawn and then tap one dawn, tap stage. You could now search top three, you know, at least something like ra mm -hmm. rather than just like trash a card and look at the top three every time is like, that's really good. It's really, yeah, really it's, good. it's really well, good. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. I don't know. It's kind of weird, right? Because like, the state like the stage design space feels really bad because like the other aspect of it is like if you have to always pay one it's incredibly horrible like <laughs> uh, uh, i mean it's not the, the aspect of it is like you like you you invest into something on, like on board right on board yeah because it's not interactable right now but like you don't get the body which is like very that, which, yeah that's come what, up right like yeah. if, if you if you essentially have to like you turn stages into like glorified like body searchers baby five searchers right, right. it feels very yeah. bad that you don't get the body on yeah yeah it's true. i mean yeah you're not wrong but uh i mean yeah. th but that's like that i guess what i'm getting at is that it's it's a bonnie that you can't do anything about you know yeah yeah i i, I get it uh, i prefer i, 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 I prefer particularly... a body but... oh sorry go ahead no, I was just gonna say, like, I, I mean, I, 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 I totally get what Ian's saying too. But like, I, both of y'all have extremely valid points, and I'm not saying one's right or wrong. But the, yeah, the yeah. body, like, the body is definitely like a big, big, big thing. Like, that's that's a when pseudo you, when you, when blocker. You kind of make, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a pseudo blocker for sure. It's like, yeah, you better, you better do something about that thing. Um, yeah. But like, I, I think 
also what fee might be saying correct me if i'm wrong is like we don't want to turn stages into like these one cost search events where it's just like they kind of serve the same purpose more or less like it it's redundancy within a within a a t within a game that i don't think is necessarily needed or, or or even warranted to be honest with you yeah 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 honestly that's the way i feel like i i really yeah. hate all the stages i just search like it, it, yeah. it just feels like such a waste of space when they could be doing more interesting things like not that any of the any of the stages i'm about to say are are good but like i think they're at least more interesting like design wise like yeah. there's like the log town stage where like you invest into it and then you get the cycle later or whatever and like the white and the marcus stage that they released the it's kind of interesting where like you your character gets removed but then you get the cycle as they get removed like those kinds of things i think are very interesting oh, but okay. i wish but like they're not strong enough because they're all essentially you're losing cars to do something that's not very strong yeah mm -hmm. yep which feels very 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 bad yeah that's fair well well I was going to say, like, what if, you know, I don't know. I, it's just tough. Maybe I'm just a firm stage hater. That's probably what it I think is. You're just a stage hater. I think I'm just, yeah. I think I'm just I a think stage hater, dude. You just, yeah. yeah. You've seen enough rage juice pull enough ETGs out of search. It's and not go even, for game it's that, not that even that rage juice. I just used it as an example because it's the most no, popular no, no. thing. But, like, I start to think yeah. about, like, okay, so we had we had stuff like Innis Lobby. That makes sense. Like, get that card. Or, yeah, yeah, Innis Lobby. Get that card out of here. It's crazy. And but people are like, oh, but it's not searchable. Blah blah blah. I'm like, dude, I don't care. Like, that card is crazy, dude. It's so good. Um minus two for like the rest of the game is pretty insane value. But um, mm -hmm. you know, then there's 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 just like a couple of other ones that have come throughout the game, you know, slowly, not like there's not really a lot, but there's like a few that bring have, Moby Dick back. Moby Dick, yeah, Moby Dick was <laughs> yeah. the thing, yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, it, like yeah, Moby Dick, like that. That is insane power level wise, yeah. right? But like, at least it's interesting design space where like you have to be z one or zero life. Yeah, and then and then it's go. Like you have to go. Right. Right. Not not that it was balanced by any means, but like it's, right. it's that kind of thing. Like we could get more interesting design space there. Like you have to play this way when your stage is on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I, I could. I, I could see some all... old stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all can agree on that. Like, there's, there's, there's just to kind of take them to the next level, if you will, in terms of designing. I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. So with the starter decks coming out, um, starter decks fifteen through twenty, uh, I don't believe there's any, at least that I know of. I don't believe there's like any relevant stages in those, but there are a lot of relevant cards that are about to make a soon to be best deck in format um that do flamingo is about to be insane dude i di i didn't realize how good it was going to be until i saw and like read the cards that are coming out from starter deck mm -hmm. um i believe it's starter deck is 17 or something like that but man it is messed up like whoever whoever said hey bro let's just give this man all the gas Every, everything yeah dude. Like, everything like that yeah. guy needs to get fired bro holy yeah. it's it's um you know i haven't i haven't played the deck i we don't we don't get the starter decks for another month and i don't yeah. i'm not gonna get ahead of myself i don't want to be over dramatic but like damn dude like what why <laughs> like why yeah. like what are we doing here um because when you read the cards like you say when you read the cards when i started to read like that that the boa hancock i'm like what yeah. and then when they open with the two drop blackbeard i was like oh well that card's good and i was like oh yeah that's a solid card and then i read that it's an activate main i thought it was an on play where it's just like yeah. okay you get you get to utilize it you know on if you you don't you don't die you don't high roll and, and get the get get to pick your turn and you're going turn two now you have a turn two play right or turn one play excuse me with with your two cost blackbeard and it's i thought it was like, okay it's activate main or what or it's on play so like you know i don't know but then when i saw it was like or when i saw it was activate main that you get to do this every single turn are you kidding me dude like i between that when you combine that and boa it's like dofi is just never gonna miss ever like it's just yeah gonna be a con like it's just the consistency in which it can just put out cards like because even now like dofi will still whiff on its leader ability if they if they just don't see a perona or they don't have the the card to set them up and they'll whiff and they'll they'll roll the dice and see if they you know have a top deck 
But like now it just feels like Dofi's never going to whiff and never miss. And the consistency in which that it can just put out an ungodly amount of cards is baffling to me. It's just like, how do you keep up with this? You don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of what you don't. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's pretty much what it feels like. <laughs> But yeah, like I, I don't think like the design for the starter deck and like where Dofi is at is like particularly like raw or or I guess like worth complaining about because it's kind of like already where the where every deck was heading. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. like every deck had now almost every deck has like oh I play a dude that plays another dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, yeah. Because mm-hmm. four cost Luchi exists, like we pretty much have to be doing that. It's just it's definitely crazy that you can recur a Jinbei on your board to get. So, like, you only need to see one copy of Jinbei a lot of the time. Yep. Which is because, yep. the what is it, there's the crocodile or the law or something yeah. that lets you bounce one of your characters to bounce one of theirs. Right. Which is law, where it starts being kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, the, new, it's the law. new law. Right. And, and so you can bounce one of yours, get rid of, well, isn't it like a like a pretty high cost too, right? Isn't I think it's like a four or it's something. A four. Like oh, it's yeah, a four? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like a yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it, it's, it's pretty crazy in that way where, like, you... You can recur your one thing that cheats out dudes over and over again, which I don't think any other deck does right now. Where like they they just keep cheating. They, they only need to see the one copy essentially. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Which feels like very bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, that's that's pretty nasty. And yeah, that like for it, it, you don't have to draw too much into that. You could just keep reusing the card over and over. But even if it goes into trash, you still have. The gecko that yep. brings it back, gecko, right? You're gonna grab yeah. it right back out. Damn, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, the cards, the decks just got so much utilization and like so many different ways to answer like all the different problems that it might have. So yeah. that's going to be a crazy, crazy deck to play. I think uh, Purple Luffy is also going to get some buffs from that starter deck. I know my man over here is in that uh, smoker waiting room, dude. God, I cannot wait, dude. Yeah. I cannot wait. I am so pumped for that, man. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like I'm definitely gonna play it, but I don't know. It. You're a meta slave. What can I say? No, 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 no. That is not true. All right. I'm messed with you. I'm a mono black slave. Okay. And Mm -hmm. whatever deck is best for that is what I'll play. I'll probably get. Yeah, I'll probably get cooked in um, when uh, the Doflamingo stuff starts coming out, but like. I don't know. I feel like starter deck Luffy is is like in such a good spot. Like the more that I keep testing this deck, I feel like it's in such a good spot for OPO eight and has a really, really good like chance of being one of the best decks in the format. Um, at least until Doflamingo comes out, then I don't even know what happens. We just go from there. But yeah, I I mean, Fee, I, I know you uh we're talking about like potentially doing nami or what was it nami or bonnie or uh i might play nami or luchi that's kind of where i'm at right now luchi yeah yeah um have you tried like have you tried any i know you've watched some of my uh terrible drunken sim games um (laughs) but yeah i mean like that luffy deck dude it feels super solid it really does yeah i it's not that i don't think the deck is strong i think the deck just looks very boring and like unimpressive how dare you how dare you sir Uh, it's just like you you play dude it happens it sticks and then like this dude does something very good with like the next dude on your curve which which is fine yeah yeah, yeah. but it's i can see why it's strong i just don't think it's particularly like the best deck in format like it doesn't no no i wouldn't go that far i I think it's, it's just a very like consistent you're very consistently doing something that feels strong. Yeah. I just like how it, it feels into what I would consider are the best decks in the format. Um, I mean, the only matchup that I feel like the deck has a pretty rough time into... Is, well, I wouldn't even say pretty rough. It's just like, it doesn't feel great, you know? It feels like it, maybe like 60-40, like you probably just lose, you know, 60% of the time, but uh, is Lucci. But... Other than that, I think it feels great into uh, Nami. Feels good into Black Yellow Luffy. Feels good into Bonnie. Um, I actually don't even mind it into Zoro. Like, weirdly enough. Uh, you see Brook, and that matchup's kind of good. It's like, actually pretty good for you. And you got Zoro, or, uh, Sanji as well. So, yeah, there's a... 
I don't know. I haven't really found a matchup other than Lucci and like sometimes Reju. I just feel like Reju, if they just high roll with the stage and stuff like that, you just kind of get cooked. But yeah, that's Reju. I guess every deck though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I'm like, oh, you got me. <laughs> yep. uh, you, you, you go Porsche ETG, Porsche ETG. Okay, oh. I, I give up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. You're better. Into Black Maria into into Black Maria into Judge. You're just like, oh, okay, cool. You got to you got to be extremely uh aggressive with your negging Don because all you gotta do is slap down Black Maria and just go immediately into a judge. You're just like, oh, well, that's that's convenient. That's real nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, I think it's kind of interesting that uh, as far as like the OPO eight meta is concerned at the moment, we don't really just we don't have a lot of like information. We really don't. We just have yeah. two tournaments that happened in australia and one of them this is crazy when i heard about this kind of like blew my mind because wasn't this like right it happened like right as we were at uh i think uh, it happened national. Like while we were at nats yeah at nationals <laughs> um but one the the guy that won uh playing boa hancock and second place went to nami and i was just like what is going on over in the east you know in australia right now this is crazy but Boa Hancock was took first tournament, and then after that, first place went to Rob Lucci in a second tournament, with Nami yet again hitting the second place. So I think like Nami's Nami's poised to be like the, I mean the deck is super good. It's mm -hmm. it's I I can't really I don't play enough Nami to know what the like you would definitely be the one to answer this fee. But like, what are the worst matchups that Nami even has to play against in the in the current meta? Uh, any blue deck that techs against Nami for some reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, puts in yeah. Geon yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You, if they play Geon or... Honestly, any of the, it's funny that Nami's a blue deck and then loses immediately to all the blue decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if, because all the tech that gets Nami exists in blue. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Reiju as well. Like, I mean, yeah, Reiju being a blue deck goes well into Nami. Yeah, there was Reiju. a card... There was a card that I saw that's an older card that's like set five or set six that I saw in a tweet where like it was a Nami mirror and the guy played the card and the card reads something absurd. Like if your opponent uses an event, they also have to like trash two cards or like. Oh, that's Geo. Oh. No, no, no. Well, so, no, 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 there's, no, no, a no. Different, there's a different card. There's another card that's oh. not Geo that is teched and it is in. I'll have to go back and find it, but it's the most insane card that I've read that is like Nami tech. Uh, that literally, I'm gonna have to dig it up. I'm gonna dig it up and I'll put it out on my Twitter account. But it's just an <laughs> insane card against Nami that it was a Nami mirror. The guy played the card and the other Nami literally just scooped and was like, I yeah. mean, I just, I just lose. Do you know what I'm talking about, Fee? Do you know what card yeah, it is? I know what it is. It, it, it's, it's a Zef. It's like a three cost Zef. So it's just yeah. if, if oh. they activate blocker or use an event, you get to mill four. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, you get to yeah. mill four. Yeah. Oh wow. So in the mirror, it's just like an auto loss if they see it early enough. <laughs> yeah. So there's no point in playing it out. Dang. Because you, you you literally you literally just died like five k six six k's over like what six turns. Wow. Yeah. There's literally no there's no way to win. But and, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's, that's is that like a one of? You just throw that in as like a one of? I think it was Three. a two for yeah. that guy's deck, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, you, you just beat up the Nami mirror. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it a? Do you remember what set it's from? I want to say six, but I, I'm not sure. It's probably six. It's yeah, six, it, it's six it, or seven. Yeah, it's one of those cards that like completely flew underneath the radar, I guess, and for good reason because yeah. it's really situational. But damn, it, that, it's when literally I read that... only for the Nami mirror. Like you yeah, exactly. can't play it anywhere else because if somebody else like has a blocker or something, they just won't block, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So, so I, I actually, yet again, being someone that doesn't really play Nami, have only ever played, I think, like three games of Nami ever. How do you play the Nami mirror? Like, how does that mirror even work? Uh, you don't swing. After you shuffle your deck, you pray to every god you know before <laughs> you you draw five and hope that your Pilos and Kaya's are not in your life. <laughs> and and pray that you won the dice roll and and go second. Yeah, pray you want you go draw. second. Pray the other guy's not on hanger, Zeph, whatever obtuse blue Nami mirror or Nami tech it there is that you can play. No. And then you just draw. That's it? You just keep That's passing just turns draw. and just drawing. You, yep. Wow. You just get you just go like, oh I have Kaya, play Kaya, draw go. <laughs> wow. That's and then a... whoever I don't know whoever how you do it. More draws or wit or whoever whiffs less wins. Basically. 
That's crazy. I don't know how you do it, Fee. I like just that mirror alone would make me never touch that deck again in my life, dude. There's no shot. If you think about it, it's just like it's a 50-50. You just go in and it's like, okay, the guy's not playing any any more anti nami tech. Okay, let's just <laughs> Yeah, roll the dice. Find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just like a, a more complicated way of flipping a coin. That's wild. Okay. That's that's fair to say. That is fair to say. God, that's got to be miserable. Like Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, put uh, it You said uh, yeah, it's all right. Well, well, I, mean, like, I guess it's miserable if you're if you're the kind of guy to lose coin flips like that. Yeah. But like it, it really is just like if they're not playing like random Wait. Games, the three costs F. Did you just then, say if you're the kind of guy to lose yeah. coin flips? Yeah, if you're the kind of guy to lose coin flips, it's, it's the same thing. If you're the kind of guy to lose your dice rolls, you're not gonna have, <laughs> you're not gonna have fun, right? Bro, get good at coin flips. That's the strat. <laughs> yeah, you got to. You draw better. Like, yeah, like draw better and, and win get good coin, at coin flips. flips. <laughs> yeah. And and you're the OP. The you're the OP man. I fucking love it. God. Oh my god, yeah. that's, that's amazing. But yeah, if you think about it, like if you just sit there and like you just go through, like okay, I played my deck efficiently, and like there's nothing, there's nothing that's gonna happen, right? Like you just sit there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Hey, my my deck sling and his deck did its thing. I put more things in my life that I needed to win the matchup. Yeah. Versus like okay, and it, it is it's pretty like brain off too. Like yeah, you don't really have to do anything. Like okay, I played the what's the grandma Gloriosa. Okay, I, I drew a card, played Marguerite Drunk. All right, pass. The guy's not gonna swing at me. Yeah, interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. that's so crazy. I I I I don't know why I never really like thought about it or saw like. Man, you know what? They never put those mirror matchups uh, no. on, like, no. you know, to spectate. No. Imagine one day we have a Nami final. <laughs> Just, like, two players. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be so hilarious. Uh, it, it, it'd be a bad final to watch for sure. Uh, hilarious, <laughs> yeah. It'd be it'd be terrible. It'd be you know I would just love for them to be like, hey, we're not really trying to play this, so we're just gonna roll the dice and whoever gets higher wins. And then they tell the commentators right. like, all right, well that's it. He rolled a nine. He rolled a seven. You know, GGs. Yeah, yeah. honestly, I would like, look my not... opponent. I would look my opponent in the eye and I would say, you're the kind of guy to lose coin flips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly though, like if Nami players like were just told each other their deck list and say like, "Hey, I'm not running Zeph," or like, I, "Like we're running like the same amount of hangers or something," yeah, let's just like do mulligans and then flip over life. If you have more draw than in your life, then I win. That's it. It, it would save a lot of time, honestly. Yeah, I was gonna say that makes perfect sense to me and save us all all the time and agony of watching that all unfold. That's yeah. hilarious. Well, you're like yeah. one of the fastest players I've ever met, bro. I see you, <laughs> you literally like put stuff down so fast and pass your turn within like 20 seconds every time. I'm like, bro, what? I like to go so, fast. Um, for the rest of eight until the structure decks uh, get here, do we have any major tournaments in between now and then? Or Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do we got? What do we got? Because I'm curious what y'all's thoughts are and what what is going to be the strongest leader for the set eight before the for, before the structure decks out um and what you know who's gonna what leader's gonna have the best chances of of taking taking the wins so there's so a bunch have... of starter or uh, store regionals and there's a bunch of online regionals and as well oh, as offline store regionals that's yeah. right yeah there so before starters we have three or four online regionals yeah and then it's up in the air if any of the offline regionals or it's up in the air if the offline regionals right at the beginning of November will have started X legal. Okay. So they, they should have started X legal because it's a week after they released. Because like mm -hmm. I think they're on the second, and then started X released technically on the twenty fifth. But uh, I don't know. Oh oh, Rules. so the second of November. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they should be legal. They technically should be legal because it's right, a week right. after. I don't know. TLs can do whatever TLs want. I guess. Right. <laughs> But in terms of like the up until starter decks, the, I think the meta really is a lot of the same. It's just some decks got can show up in like top sixteen or something, right? So like, I think if you're trying to win a regional, you should play By Luffy. You should consider playing Luchi, and you should probably. And then if you think you can luck out in matchup spread, you can play either the blue decks or Bonnie, Bonnie. right? But if you don't luck out in your matchup spread, it's really really hard to play those decks. And then I think you can also probably win with um, with Black Luffy. 
just because like it's it's kind of like similar to like Luchi matchup spread, but you get a better black yellow matchup. Mm -hmm. so I think like those three decks are likely to win a lot of regionals or win the October online regionals, but I'm not really sure if I would believe in any other deck if you told me to. <laughs> like I don't think like Zoro is gonna win. I think it'll just talk. Yeah, it'll it'll probably do. It'll have one one list that just makes it up there. Yeah. You don't think Nami has the uh, the ability to get up there, Fee? No, it, I yeah. I think he could win with Nami for sure. Like it, 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 it's it's a big part of like you you do have to see really good matchups. Like you need to dodge like the blue decks. You need to dodge, and you still have to draw very well that day. Mm -hmm. So I think Nami could win. I just think it's very unlikely. Okay. Ian, what are your thoughts? Uh, relatively similar. Um, I think that, I think personally, Lucci's just going to be the best deck. Uh, I think BY actually just has, um, like it's not gotten any worse, but it also hasn't gotten any better. Whereas Lucci's arguably gotten better. Um, so I think Lucci, I don't know. I could see it doing better mm -hmm. than BY as a whole. Um, but since uh, since Lucci will probably be one of the top decks, BY is not going to go anywhere, and BY is like ridiculous. It's super strong, um, but it can also just kind of brick, which you know makes the deck I don't know undesirable sometimes. But I have a lot of faith that starter deck fourteen Luffy is actually going to perform really well. I really, really have a lot of faith in that deck. Um, I also don't think like the perfect deck list has been kind of cracked yet. Uh, I think right now the ratios are, they're being figured out. I like my ratios, but getting getting it to where it's going to be extremely good into the Luchi matchup is like where I think it is the, the challenge. Um, because Luchi's not like unbeatable, but it's definitely your, probably your biggest adversary. Uh, Bonnie, I feel like got a bit of an upgrade with having Carrot now. So I think Bonnie's like poised to do fairly well also, but it just kind of sucks because now Jack's a thing. So like your Luchi matchup just blows. So yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I feel like Bonnie's probably going to top at least like, I feel like one Bonnie will top in every event. Um, But will it, will it get like top eight every event? Maybe not, but like, I could see top 32, definitely, every event, having a Bonnie. I feel like Nami's... I, I almost guarantee we'll probably see a Nami at least in the top 16 of every event. That's me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> it's, um, it, it's literally just a solid deck, good matchups. Um, I don't foresee a ton of people playing blue except you know, like a handful and then like they're, they're all in like the Dofi waiting room, you know, they are. Like, yeah. just waiting for that starter deck to really, you know, kick that deck off um, uh, and just go, go crazy. So Nami could be up there. I don't really foresee any yellow decks other than maybe Katakuri, like getting some, some higher placements. I think Katakuri can just kind of high roll its way up there sometimes. Anel feels like it's been super figured out and now it's like yeah. now it's like extra cooked with uh yeah. with Jack. Jack is like, "Oh, you are done, dude. You are cooked." Um Calgara maybe. I don't know. I feel like Calgara would have to get stupid lucky in my opinion. Like stupid lucky to do well. I think Reju is still going to be insane. Um it's not like it got worse. It got Black Maria, which is just amazing and um Reju's never never bad just a good deck you know yeah yeah so that's my thoughts but I think that right. I think Lucci's probably still gonna be the best in my opinion um BY close second yeah I I would agree I think I kind of have them as like 1A 1B and I don't if you if you put one in front of the other I'm not gonna argue it with you um but I think those are pretty much the two clear front runners I I Personally, I've not really played too much with the starter deck, uh, Luffy, so I don't. But I'm curious, real quick, what? So when you say Luchi's the bad matchup, what is what is the difference? Like, what what is it that's pivoting that towards Luchi's favor in that matchup? It's mostly that um, you're reliant on you're pretty reliant on seeing like your your top end cards uh, kind of over and over again uh, in 
in that matchup. And if they if they see like one Moria, and yeah, sure you can remove it and everything, and but after that. You know, you're just taking multiple swings at your life while they can kind of like set up and remove uh, normally every turn. It it feels just kind of bad. Like, I don't know. I've I've had this I've had this experience with that deck or with that that matchup that if they have Kuzan and they play Kuzan, you just kind of lose, right? Uh, unless I have Sanji to answer answer it immediately. If I don't have Sanji to answer it, the the game becomes very bad. Um, okay. if they do have, uh, excuse me, if they don't have Kuzan, then it just boils down to like, if they, if they keep seeing, you know, multiple, uh, Morias, then they just out remove you. They outvalue you. Um, they basically do everything that you want to do, but better. Uh, it's like they can remove and play defense and like all this other stuff. So, and like, Four cost cards are kind of like the bane of your existence as as Black Luffy because like you want to pop them with Jack, but like the only way to do that is to either be swinging with Brook, playing just hard playing Brook, using like Suru or Ice Age or something for a four cost, and it just it never feels great. Yeah. If it, it, whereas they can just like swing minus one and then do it. But that's the beauty of playing Luffy is that like all my all my stuff should be plus one as well, so. But like removing four costs is I uh, it's normally like light work for them, you know. It's like I can play an event card, draw one, all that stuff, and then Luchi double two two things, bye bye. So yeah, yeah, it's, Fair a, enough. it's annoying. And then they're obviously like getting rid of Jack in any black matchup is annoying. So I'm like trying to. I'm toying around with the idea of like, do I play Stussy? Do I not play Stussy? Do I play like Jack or do I play the eight cost Rush Luffy? Or not Jack, excuse me, uh, Kaido or play the eight cost Rush Luffy. There's, I feel like there's like a couple of like one of two of tech choices that you can use for the deck. It just kind of depends on what you're going to, you you expect to see for the day, I guess. All right. That's fair. Yeah. Totally fair. Yeah. But um, I would say like, as far as OPO8 is concerned, I think one, it's it's cool. I th I don't think I'm like as hyped for the the meta as I thought I might be because I'm like ah, uh, it just feels kind of similar to OPO7. But I think when the starter deck comes out, I think it, it, a lot of things get really exciting. Like you know, the purple, uh, black, and blue starter decks seem like it's gonna be really fun for a lot of decks. Um, the yellow makes Katakuri actually kind of dangerous, which is weird. Yeah. I don't like that, but you know, it is what it is. Dude, um, I am not, yeah. I'm so, I don't want to play against Katakuri. Man. I'll be a Katakuri hater till I die, bro. Yes. Till amen I, to that. Till I die. All right. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean like we've got, we've got a lot of stuff to look forward to. I'm also, mm -hmm. um, excited for, uh, what is it? The fact that they're doing kind of like the starter deck 11 Uta event, they're doing the starter deck 15 through 20. It's going to be an event where you choose one of the starter decks uh, and you have to play with what's in that starter deck against everyone else at the tournament. And there will be prizes and, and um, uh, participation and stuff like that. I thought that was so cool. I was like, dude, this yeah. is awesome. Like you can't add anything else to it. It's just like, dude, you get the deck, you have fun, you play, and I'm like, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So I'm all for it. That's that's a really cool event. I love that. Very cool. I I'm yeah. stoked. And but I still yeah. I don't even know exactly what cards are in each of the starter decks. So I have to go through and look at that. Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, like there's only like in every starter deck, there's, there's only like, like a five... handful of of newer cards because the yes. rest are just reprints. But yeah, I just yeah, don't know what the reprints cards... are. Right. Well. And well, those newer cards are a lot of them are extremely impactful <laughs> newer cards. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely gonna definitely gonna make it. It's gonna be fun to play that event. Actually, and the more I'm thinking about it, I'm yeah. like, this is actually gonna be really fun, dude. It was cool to play the Uda event where you know, like I, the one thing I hate about pre-release events is that you just open up a, a bunch of random stuff, and if you pulled like God Godlike, you just can't lose. Yeah, you just win. Yeah, yeah. you just win. Right, yeah. but the Uda events were really fun because it was like everybody has the same deck, like the exact yeah. same deck right yeah and um that was really fun you know so it yeah. made like you could, even if you were playing mirrors over and over again i was like oh this is super cool because i know what you're running and you know what i'm running 
So <laughs> the best is uh, when anyone posts their win, you just gotta ask them uh, ask them what what the deck list was. That was always fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah post your list, the, bro. Post your list. Share the spice, man. Share the spice. <laughs> That's funny. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, just kind of going over, you know, a little bit of nationals at the very beginning, but talking about OPO8 and the excitement for you know what's to come in the future. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how it all pans out. I would love to, I just really can't wait for October. Cause like, I want to see if our predictions will be correct. I feel like they will be, but at the end of the day, you know, you never know. Sometimes you just get hit with like these random tournaments where a boa Hancock wins or something, you know, and you're <laughs> like, what, how bro. And yeah. so I, I'm excited to see, you know, where it goes, how everything, um, pans out. But massive shout out to our friend Fee over here for joining yes. us today, um, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's we've had to hear the entire podcast, so it's been right on the right side. But please do go and check out his X or Twitter account, if you will, and uh, uh, his YouTube channel. You know, they got a lot of good content going over there. Some of the guys in the in the Dad Wins Discord, all right, <laughs> the goats over at Doe's Town, all right. So they do a lot of commentary as well and talking about, you know, um, thoughts of, you know, the meta and, uh, you know, uh, results of tournaments and, you know, potential ideas. So definitely go and show them some love. Other than that, uh, you know, we appreciate you listening, whether you're on YouTube or Spotify, and hope you guys have a phenomenal day. Peace. Later.